प्लीज यूज स्टैंडर्ड हेडफोन रिकमेंडेड बाई पी टी Hi guys welcome to Sydney Safari if you are new to channel please subscribe in this video we are going to discuss about new pt format score test b and tricks in a fast forward mode if you want complete two hours mock test you can check in description there is a separate video for it let's start Extroverts tend to move quickly and try to influence situations directly while introverts give themselves time to develop their insights before exposing them to the world. Extroverts are happy making decisions in the thick of events while introverts want to reflect before taking action. The purpose of the informative speech is to provide interesting, useful and unique information to your audience. By dedicating yourself to the goals of providing information and appealing to your audience, you can take a positive step toward succeeding in your efforts as an informative speaker. The elephant is the largest living land mammal. The elephant is the largest living land mammal. There are lots of opportunities to meet new people in this course. There are lots of opportunities to make people in this course. The computer crashed and I hadn't saved my work. Computer crashed and I haven't shaved my work. You must include your name and identity number on the registration form. You must include your name and identification number in your registration form. The main issue is to decide how we want to launch the new product. The main issue is to decide how we are going to launch this product. This paper is the best one to look at first. Test paper is the first to look out for. What's going on that can help patients leave their fears at the door? What's going on that fiercely and I'm happy today? Inflation rose by 2% over this time last year. Inflation rose by 2% last year. Applicants for the course should preferably have a degree in English or journalism. Applicant in course preferably have a degree in English or journalism. After 1830 periodicals appeared in large numbers in America. After 1830 periodical appeared large number in North America. Soil erosion can be caused by increased rainfall and changes in plant growth. Solar erosion can be happened due to 
rainfall and i am happy today Volunteers who incurred any expense, reimbursement available, postage, phone calls, meals, training, travel costs, uniform, other, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40 percent, postage, phone calls, meals, training, travel costs, uniform, other, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40 percent, highest, lowest numbers, colors, black and white, to conclude conclusion. Unemployment rate in 2007% Doctoral degree, master's degree, bachelor's degree, associate degree 740, 1987, 1165 3.0, 2.2, 1.8, 1.4% Doctoral degree, master's degree, bachelor's degree, associate degree Medium weekly earning in $2007 $1,165 Highest, lowest numbers, colors, black and white To conclude conclusion Coming out of the 19th century with all that happened, and so quickly, some of these ideas, some of these theories, like thermodynamics and kinetic theory, they didn't blend the way they should have. Thermodynamics has its roots in, in matter, how material things respond to heat and temperature and so forth. The laws of thermodynamics were thought to be absolute. Now take kinetic theory. If matter consists of atoms in random motion, and that's what matter is, then you open up the possibility that there will be fluctuations in samples of matter such that the laws of thermodynamics can momentarily be violated. Are the laws of thermodynamics valid, absolute? Are they obeyed statistically? On average, they're obeyed, but they can be violated during unusual times, all right? Thermodynamics was the main topic of the lecture. Initially, lecturer discussed about thermodynamics, the roots and matter. Then he discussed about material, heat and temperature. Then he discussed about absolute contract and action. Then he discussed about electronic sample of matter. Then he discussed about valid and absolute. Then he discussed about dynamic root and material. Then he discussed about heat, temperature and absolute. Then he discussed about can contract and thermodynamics. To conclude, lecture was very informative. What is the term for the money people pay to the government to support public services? Tax. What material is normally used to make windows and light bulbs? Glass. Who prepares and sells medicine in a shop or hospital? Medical representative. Where on a college campus would a periodicals collection be located? Library. What is the inedible center of a peach, cherry, or grape called? Grape called. To find a detailed topographical map of Africa, what kind of reference book would be best to use? Atlas.
For many people, language acquisition starts at around about 12 months when kids say their first word, but don't forget the first year. That first year of life is very important as well, and indeed before you're born, remember, there are a couple of months before you're born when you're actually able to perceive in the womb something of the language that's around you. So language acquisition starts earlier than most people think. And it also ends later than most people think. When does child language acquisition stop? Well, in a sense, you know, we're, we're all children. We're, we stay being children all our lives. There, there's, there's no obvious end point. For, for learning sounds, of course, there is. And for learning grammar, there is. But vocabulary, huh? I mean, that goes on for the rest of our lives. There's a million or more words in English, and most of us only have a vocabulary of 50, 60, 70,000 words or whatever it is. And so there's always something more to learn. So remember that the two ends of child language acquisition are wider apart than some people think. And that means there's more scope for studying it than most people think. In his book, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat and Other Clinical Tales, neurologist Oliver Sacks relates the tale of a medical student who one day woke up and found that his sense of smell was so acute that like a dog he could walk around identifying people, places, and things by his sense of smell. And what a wondrous experience it was. Like a visit to another world, he said. 
Now, normally, we humans don't have a sense of smell as acute as many other animals. We tend to rely more on what we see or hear to tell us about the world. Still, our sense of smell is powerful. Most of us can detect 10,000 different odors, from cigar smoke to a chlorinated swimming pool, from curry to a city sewer. And think about how a particular odor can instantly conjure up past memories. Maybe it's fresh cut grass that makes you think of childhood summers or baking bread that reminds you of a special holiday. Experimental psychological research is conducted in a lab under controlled conditions. It attempts to rely solely on an application of research methods to understand behavior and mental processes. As an example of a psychological experiment, you might want to investigate people's perception of different tones. Specifically, you could ask the following question. Is it easier for people to discriminate one pair of tones from another depending on their frequency? To answer this, you would want to disprove the hypothesis that all tones are equally easy to discriminate. Graham Greene may have inadvertently supplied one of the key phrases of the past 50 years in the title of his novel, A Burnt-Out Case. The image of a dead fire perfectly fit the psychological aftermath of long hours, dashed hopes, and depression. And while burnout is not a medical diagnosis, it describes a condition we all recognize, except perhaps in ourselves.
Well, the banana is the first cultivated fruit. Um, it's one of the uh, food items that literally brought people out of the uh, jungle, out of their hunter-gatherer lifestyles, and was there at the dawn of agriculture, which is what um, what helped m- force human beings into communities. It's really a, one of the things that helped invent human culture. Uh, it's about 7,000 years of history. Um, and the banana, from its center of origin, which is believed to be um, uh, Papua New Guinea, it spread out um, with people who traveled in boats um, across the Pacific um, into uh, the mainland of Asia and all the way south um, to Australia, across Indonesia, Micronesia, and eventually they moved as far as Africa um, and even possibly to Ecuador, all in this time and all on um, paddled boats and wind-driven boats. In the United States, the uh, poet Walt Whitman published uh, a work called Democratic Vistas. This was in 1871, and I I quote from that work. Um, He's talking here about uh, the development of a program of culture drawn out, not for a single class alone or for the parlors or lecture rooms, but with an eye to the practical life and to the West, the working man, the facts and forms and jack planes and engines, of the broad range of the woman also, of the middle class and working strata, and with reference to the perfect equal quality of women and of a grand and powerful motherhood. So these ideas of the individual, the the ordinary individual, as someone who has a right and a responsibility to an education, had begun clearly to emerge in, in the United States. So starting with a question, why industrial cities matter? Well, in 1995 and 6, funded by the Joseph Roundtree Foundation, I did a study with um, a fellow researcher called The Slow Death of Great Cities. And that was because urban abandonment in America was happening on such a scale and causing such terror over here that when cities like Manchester and Newcastle started to show signs of empty properties emerging in their city streets, in their inner city streets. There was kind of quite serious panic. So that was my first exposure to what happens when cities start losing population in a significant way. And we identified 15 priority projects which are supposed to be urgent and immediate needs of adaptation. And these projects, the first one is slightly being implemented, but there is so much bureaucracy behind the 
funding of a project that it still hasn't been implemented properly. So if these were urgent and immediate needs, then how come it's not being implemented on an urgent and immediate basis? Because the fund is not there. Even if the fund is there, some bureaucratic things are holding it behind. There are some of the funds, they say, like, you have to have certain infrastructures in place and certain uh, things have to be in place for us to fund this additional climate change. But the funds are what everyone says in these climate change conferences are not enough. They're just not enough. When I was 14 years old, a visionary visited my school. The man was a pioneer in new technologies, and he had come to announce how the world I was growing up in was on the verge of radical change. He brandished a VHS cassette and announced that television was going to be transformed forever. Using the power of VHS, everyone would make their own TV programs. Instead of accepting the bland output of comedy and drama from the existing networks, we would simply take control ourselves and become producers as well as consumers. TV stations were going to close, corporations would fold, and a new wave of creativity was about to be unleashed. To me at that age, it seemed like impeccable logic, and the scenario he des uh, described seemed inevitable. Over the following years, it became clear that what he had predicted was certainly not coming true, and I began to think of him as an idiot. The neuroendocrine system is under particular onslaught in our modern life. Not only does it serve as the conduit for our emotional life, but it is also under threat from our external environment. The amount of chemicals acting as so-called endocrine disruptors is going up by the day. These chemicals, which range from pesticides and herbicides to ingredients of plastics, which look chemically like some of the hormones in our bodies, can then bind to the receptor and cause a stimulation of the receptor, or block it so that the appropriate hormone cannot... Logistics is really orchestrating what we now call globalization. Um, companies have outsourced and offshored many of their operations, in fact, some of their, their, almost their entire operations. And what's come to be called supply chain management, which is the strategic end of this business, is what knits it all together. It is what makes sure that things turn up where they should be, when they should be. And by squeezing cost out of the system, you don't carry so much stock, you don't need to have the warehouses of old, and you can move things faster and... River systems can be classified by their basic shapes. 
Young streams are generally straight, are in narrow, steep-sided valleys, and are often fast-flowing in a channel with many big rocks. Young streams have high gradients, meaning the elevation of the stream changes quickly with distance. Old rivers are in broad, flat valleys. They flow slowly and carry sand and mud. Old streams, like the lower part of the Mississippi River, have very low gradients. That is, the elevation changes very little over long distances. Over half of patients had what we called the no symptoms, no asthma health belief. They thought about and managed their asthma as an acute episodic illness, the way someone would treat a cold or a flu. They felt when they had their wheezing or shortness of breath, that's when they had their asthma, and it made perfect sense for them to use their quick relief medicines and their chronic controller medicines then. But once they started feeling better, they felt there was no reason for using those medicines because they felt okay. It is absolutely vital that you acknowledge all your sources. In any written assignment, a detailed literature review is very important.
Control systems in manufacturing provide a high level of accuracy. you <laughs>